Anyone two? One, two. Hello, Mr. Bradley. Testing one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, one, checking one, two. welcome you all here tonight to the Holy Show. We would also take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome you to our new sports hall. This new sports hall was designed, built, and funded by the people of Dunhamore, along with their friends, primarily as a sports hall. But as you can see, it has secondary functions and it has the capacity to take a large entertainment like tonight. We in the Community Council and the people of Dunhamore are delighted to be able to provide facilities for the Holy Show. And we are doubly pleased that the money earned tonight goes to such an important cause in aid of children's leukemia in the Mercy Hospital in Cork and in Our Lady's Hospital Crumlin. This gives us a double pleasure, the fun and the entertainment and the secondary pleasure. I have two important messages before I introduce the circles. The first one, tied to the fact that this is a sports hall and we have a special floor we appeal to people not to smoke here tonight. No smoking, please. And the second message is I want to show you the fire exits. Now this hall has three fire exits. One is to my left, one is behind you there, and one is the door that you came in. Now please identify the nearest fire exit to you so that in case of emergency, you will exit through them. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the evening. I fell into a burning ring 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thanks be to God. <laughs> right, so listen, we're the circles anyway, and uh, our job is to come out here and to warm you up. And you know what? You've got DSB behind you to warm anyone up tonight. Touching the hot and poor spot. Honest to God. But you know what? It's nice to be the heat from the heat up there, so we're grand anyway. Right? Now, in order to get you all warm, what you'll have to do is sing a couple of songs. Would you sing a few songs with the band? Oh, no, you won't. Yeah, have a go anyway. Before we do the sing song, we're going to do a song, you know, that uh, Leonard's going to sing. And that's a number from the recent chart. Some of the younger ones will know this. And it's a song called California Dream. So you can kind of clap your hands for this one and get your blood circulating. Here we go. Stone death. 
Right, so listen, there was things all out as promised, and uh, we used to come to Dunhamore quite a lot in the, the days when the mock and the farmer were having the big field days. And uh, they'll be here again, will they? Well, you know where we are, we're in the golden pages, this is a show. And uh, that time we're always sure of a good old sing song with the old time waltzes, so a few old time waltzes saying the key of G, let's see you all join in, please. So we'd like to see you sway in the seats and get the old air circulating, so come on, girls, shove it next to the fella next to you there. You'll never know what may happen. Oh Lord, it's so hard to be humble When you're perfect in every way I can't wait to look and don't fall off the seat Cause I get better looking each day Handsome to know me is to love me I must be a hell of a man Oh Lord, it's so hard to be humble well, I'm doing the best. No, here's one, you know. Join in. In Dublin, fair city, where the girls are so pretty. I first said my eyes and sweet Molly Malone. She wheeled her wheelbarrow through streets broad and narrow. Crank cockles and muscles alive, alive, oh. Alive, alive, oh. That's it. Crank cockles and muscles alive, alive, oh. You're getting there nicely, girls. Keep it up, now. When I was just a little, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? You will, girl. Here's what she said to me. Okay, sir, sir, That's it. The future's not ours to see. Hey, sirrah, sirrah, what will be, will be. Well, I've a nice little cot and a small piece of land in a place by the side of the sea. And I care about no one because I believe no one can stand with me. My peace is destroyed and I'm fairly annoyed by a lassie who works in the town. She sighs every day as she passes the way. Do you want your own lovely wash down? Everybody knows. And do you want your own lovely wash down? Come shine. Do you want your own lovely wash down? She sighs every day as she passes the way. Do you want your own lovely wash down? Your head, girl. All for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. Way. We can't afford the circle that starts. But you look sweet upon the seat of your bicycle made for two. La 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 Did you enjoy your sing along? God, you were fine, honest to God. We could hear the girls who couldn't kind of hear the men much, but I suppose there's, there's always more women, and that's a grand complaint, lad. No, there's one thing I noticed about all the holy shows. Whenever we play at the holy show, there's two things about the holy show, actually. First of all, whenever we play at the holy show, it's always somebody's birthday, right? And it's always a lie, really. We only kind of make it up just to kind of induce the fellas in the band. But tonight, it's genuinely Leonard's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> It really is his birthday this very day. <laughs> and he's the youngest member of the band, and next to me. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing about him, he's not married at all. You see, me and him are like the priests, we're fathers. <laughs> he's single, and he's looking for a girl with a bit of land. So if there's any nice girl around Stuart of Dunmore or any place at all, and a nice little fella from Cork, and he's a grand car, all of his own and all. So will you sing a happy birthday for Leonard, lads, please? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Leonard, happy birthday to you. 
Okay, that's the look. Now that's the first thing about the Holy Show. The second thing about the Holy Show is that I noticed that no matter where we play, the best singers in the hall are always at this side. Isn't that very strange? Isn't that very unusual? <coughs> Would you think to be like that now tonight? Right, well I tell you what we do, we'll have a little competition. Now there's only one thing I can say, all the people at this side of the hall, there's kind of less people down here than there is up there. So all my crowd down here will have to sing a bit louder, right? A little thing called the Whistling Gypsy, you all know the Whistling Gypsy? Right, it was recorded by Joe Lynch years ago before he was my lead on, or Dinny, whatever he is. Will you take a key of G there, lad, and let's see if you know the Whistling Gypsy? Stop. You know it all right, that don't begin with any secrets now. Right, now we divide it from the middle line here down to the side and then the rest, all them up there by the wall, right? We'll sing the, the verse and when we come to the chorus, we'll take it away at one half of the hall at a time and we'll see then where the best singers are here tonight. Right, so we'll take it in. The whistling gypsy came over the hill Down through the valley so shady He whistled and he sang Till the green woods rang Then he won the heart of the lake The one that say down here, sing please Ah, see, on the outstanding On the very good, outstanding See, do, ah, see Handsome And then he sang So all the people up there, give them a big round of applause, please. Come on, hup. That's right. Now we'll have to be generous to them because they have their work cut out from out of beta. But we'll see anyway. Are you ready? He is no gypsy father dear, but Lord of these lands are over. I'm gonna stay till my dying day with the whistling gypsy rover. Two, three, four, ah. Uh. The wick, lads, the wick is. Give him a hand and join him down the middle. He was still dandy. Good man yourself. Mm. Right, so you'll have to give them a little bit of applause, though, girls, and bye. So I suppose the best way to do things, really, is combine the whole lot together, the left and the right, and the band and all, and we'll all sing, please. Adi-do, adi-do, da-day Adi-do, adi-day-di He whistled and he sang Till the green woods rang And he won the heart of a lady Do you give yourselves a big tap on? So the last holy show we played There's a song going around the chat at the moment It's kind of a few words that you be you in bar so in front of the bishop, you know? And the bishop was at the last holy show, so we had to kind of watch it. We've no bishop here tonight, have we? And he bishop. Only Father Finn, he's been nursing to a bishop, no, we'll get tonight. So we're gonna... That's him down there, Father Finn. Give me a big round of applause there, lads, please. <laughs> he don't know what's happening. He's <laughs> a good job he had the point glass in his hand, we got in trouble. Right, so the key is G. Please join in again. I have fallen for another, she can make her own way home. And even if she asks me now, will I let her go alone? Well, I used to see her up the chapel when she went to Sunday Mass. And when she go up to receive, I kneel down there and watch her pass. The glory of her ass. I used to love her, I used to love her once. Long, long time ago, I used to love her, used to love her once. A long, long time ago, it's gone. All my love is gone. Oh, oh, it's gone. All my love is gone. You remember her collecting for concern on Christmas Eve. She was all of Barfy, Air or Fastest Murphy's and Black Sea. So I walked straight up and made an ostentatious contribution. And I winked in her to tell her I'd seduce her in the future When she's feeling looser I used to love her, I used to love her once A long, long time ago I used to love her, used to love her once A long, long time ago it's gone All my love and it's gone Oh, oh, it's gone All my love and it's gone So now you know the 
thrills of it, she's no longer my obsession. And the thoughts and dreams I had of her take six months in confession. Woo! She met this young one in John Moore and she's into free expression. And her mission is to rid the world of physical repression. Then we had a session. I used to love her, I used to love her once. A long, long time ago, I used to love her, I used to love her once. A long, long time ago, it's gone. All my loving is gone. Oh, oh, oh it's gone. All my loving is gone. And it's gone. Long, long, long gone. All my loving is gone. Mother, you can make your own way home. Thank you very much. Right, so friends, well now uh, it's time for us to move back and let on the, the real stars of the Holy Show. And the very first fella is a man who is uh, going to introduce all the other fellas tonight. We usually say something very bad about this fella, but tonight, because his sister is in the audience, we're going to leave him alone, right? So give me a big welcome, please, Father Eugene Sheehan. Good evening. Oh, it's the same as starting man. Good evening. Are you, uh, you know, you're a great singer. Absolutely, very impressed. And I tell you, you need it all. Because you'll have to drown us out oh, if you're going to enjoy the night. We're going to sing, I'm going to sing a, a, a medley of songs. I was going to sing a different song tonight. Uh, so the band are kind of geared up for a different one. So I just like to do this every now and then, kind of frighten them, put them keep them on their toes. And I want you to join in and sing along with me. Uh, keep the chorus. You know, it is our show. <laughs> There you go and baby, here am I, well you left me here so I could sit and cry, well, golly gee, what have you done to me, well I guess it doesn't matter anymore, do you remember baby, last September how you held me tight each and every night, well,
Anyway, good evening and welcome to the Holy Show. And it really is a great pleasure for all of us, and the members of the Holy Show, to be with you here tonight. And I know it's a great pleasure for all of you to be here with us. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's very gracious. I start with great news, of course, and the great news is that, you know, you're finished with these guys. That's it. Your penance is done. The rest is pure, utter, perfect entertainment for the rest of the night. Um, it's very good to be here and to be associated with this fundraising venture for the uh, Mercy Hospital Leukemia Fund. And maybe we just paid tribute to the work that they do by a round of applause. <laughs> and that goes to all the organizers and everything. It really is great. Uh, cold, isn't it? Not so bad up here, you're right. Way warmer up here than near down there, is that? We have all the look. Uh, Polar bear, polar bear in photo, up to daddy. Daddy, are we really polar bears? Yes, yes, son, we are. Daddy, do we come from the Arctic Circle? He says, yes, son, we do. And tell me, daddy, is there a lot of snow there and cold or oh, freezing? And that's our home? Yeah. So he goes up to me, mommy, are we really polar bears? I have you asking those questions of your father. What's wrong with you? Well, Mammy, I'm frozen. <laughs> so even, even, the, even the polar bears are bad. So look, I'm going to, we're going to warm the cockles of your heart uh, with this song, I hope. It's a song that was um, written, well, I'm not sure what you wrote it, but you released it in here, by Nancy Griffith. And it's very appropriate to what's happening in the world today. It's called From a Distance. Breathe. 
Thank you very much. Did you enjoy that? Did it sound good? Yeah, and you know, this is this is typical holy show. You know, we can sound so professional, and then all of a sudden we muck it up. <laughs> One thing is, next song I'm going to sing for you is my, my Cavan Girls Off There. And for that, I need a capo, which I put on the guitar. And what did I do? But then I put it into the pocket of my coat, and I left my coat over there in the seat. Michael Harrington, yeah. if you're there, would you ever? Bring up my coat. Now, did you see this ever happen anywhere else? Uh, that's what makes the Holy Show unique. It's a brown coat. We don't wear black anymore. <laughs> what do you think of the jumper? Huh? This, ladies and gentlemen and children, is the new spring wear. <laughs> Promulgated by Bishop John McGee. Now, there you are. Father Friendly. don't turn against us. Because my own sister already did. She said she wouldn't be caught dead with me looking like this. <coughs> right, this is a song that uh, won the, uh, what is this, the Cavan Song Contest, written by a, a, an American lad actually called Tom Moore, not that Tom Moore. And uh, I, th I think it's a nice song and I hope you like it anyway. Good. 
night can only get better. Right, I'm going to introduce you um, the next guest immediately uh, after you have done one thing, because we can continue until you do this, you know. There will not be a holy show until you do this. For God's sake, thank the circus. <laughs> five years ago, five years ago, they were down and out in Princess Street busking along under the sad and pathetic name of Snotty and the Nose Pickles. And along came a nun, Sister Fidelma, from the Mercy, and she picked him up and brought him in, cleaned him up, and said to the us, the priest, would we take him along, and here they are. Isn't it wonderful? Wouldn't it lift your heart? Oh, and uh, first prize in the raffle tonight is Leonard. <laughs> Right, I'm going to introduce you to the next man. He's, if you like a bit of, um, of good swinging music, um, Dixie music, stuff from uh, uh, the southern states of America, this is your man, a man that has traveled the world, but tonight he has traveled to Dunamore. And I want you to welcome on stage Father Michael Harrington.
thank you very much. Now that tune was Stranger on the Shore. And if I could see you down there, which I can, <laughs> I'd know whether you were strangers or not. And I'd say you probably aren't. Because some of you may remember I spent six years in this parish. I left it, I think, 16 years ago. I came here in 1969 and left it six years later. So if my sums are right, 16 years ago I left it, and of course, I'm no stranger because anywhere I go, I have to go through Dunamore. So I'm no stranger to the shores of Dunamore. And now, the next bit of music I'd like to play is maybe a very special thought now for so many people, so many very good friends that I made in Dunamore, and so many people who were so wonderfully kind to me when I was here, and of course, to my mother, who lived with me then, and to my housekeeper, who was then with me too. And I, I won't mention any names, but I made hosts of fantastic friends here. And to you all, I'll say, have I told you lately that I loved you? When I get this, when I get this stuff, we'll be right. <laughs> Now, no matter how well I know the roads of Dunamore, I lost my way there. <laughs> I certainly did. Now, Jean, Jean she and our MC mentioned that I will travel all over the world. Not quite, but I, I, I spent some time, some time in New Orleans for a lot of jazz and blues and so on, and uh, Dixieland. 
and just now to get everybody's feet tapping and being very lively, good lively rollicking bit of Dixieland. Can I just cut in here, lads? Father Hinton, as you probably remember from 16 years ago, is a very fine singer, but he very, very rarely sings. So it's only on very special occasions and in very uh, certain locations that we can persuade him to sing. If you give me a big roll of applause, he might get a song for himself.
a man of many talents. He made a great job of him while he was here. He told me he had plenty of time to practice on the saxophone. <laughs> Actually, sorry, he didn't tell you. He was telling us earlier on about um, New Orleans. Um, he was there. Mike takes his, uh, his uh, uh, ordination and his vocation very seriously. And in the street, in the, 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 the home of music in New Orleans of jazz is a street called Bourbon Street. Problem is that it's also a home of a lot of other things. <laughs> and Father Michael was very upset to see what was going on there, so he decided he would preach the word of the Lord to all and sundry. So he did run around from place to place, and he came across this house, a house of ill repute. And he said, well, the Lord wouldn't turn his back on them. So he went, and he knocked on the door, and he shouted, was there any Catholics in there? And he heard a voice one saying to another, my God, we have a choosy one here. <laughs> <laughs> He'd kill me for that. <laughs> oh, ask him. He'll tell you all about it. We, um, we're going to raise the standard of this a little bit. I think it's important. Do you like opera? Yes? I had a little child saying yes. My God, this is great. We're going to... Oh no. And we were doing very well. Actually, um, you had that for supper the last time as well. <laughs> Bad point about it, you know, is that his mother and father, they were hoping for a boy. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh yeah? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I bet he can't sing opera. Did something for Rigoletta, actually, not for <laughs> Madame Butterfly. <laughs> something for Rigoletta, no, please, lad. <laughs> no, I, I think it would be safer if they went to the other because you know what I mean? That's old, old. Yeah. Problem. They try to sabotage everything I do. Look at that, Leon. Now, if Houdini, Houdini wouldn't do that better now to me, he wouldn't know. Come here to me. Any boys and girls in the audience going to school? How many of you? Would you take a small bit of advice from me, lads? Give it up. Excuse me, all the ones that do be laughing at me. I said, I'm serious. I said, give it up if you have any sense at all. Refuse to get up tomorrow morning and don't go back to school. I tell you, my life is ruined over school. I got there for two weeks and I learned a lot more since I gave it up. It's the greatest waste of time I was. But you know, I good reason to give it up, sir. I have. I have very good reason to give up school. Teachers, when I there. They have ruined my life. Do you know the first thing a teacher told me when I went to school? He told me I was made wrong. He told me I was made wrong. And I, I'm, I might be a bit thick, but, 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 but I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive, you see? And I went home told my mammy I don't go back to school anymore. And she said, why? I said, I was insulted by the teacher. He told me I was made wrong. And she said, what exactly did he say? Well, the teacher said that my feet was made for running, my nose was made for smelling, but my feet was always smelling and my nose was always running. <laughs> yeah. 
And 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 no, and no, another very very good reason for giving up school. I the teacher talked to me. He talked to me. He did. Yeah. I'm very genuine. No, I'm very genuine. I only go, go to the toilet when I have to go to the toilet. But you know, I had a a, a kidney infection one one day, and I had to go to the toilet. And very politely, I did the way I was asked to do it. I went up and I said, "We care from Dolma." And he said, no, I go down, I bluff and then I go down again. And, but the crisis was on again, about 10 minutes later, I went up again. And I said, but can I go and do the marsh the holly? He said, no, again, I go down again. And oh, the crisis was getting worse. And 10 minutes later, I go up again. I go up, I go up, I go up, and I was there. I said, but can I go and do the marsh the holly, please? And he said, no, again, I go down again. And I'm in the north of the horse or something. And 10 minutes later, I go down and I went up and said, so, can I empty my Wellington? <laughs> 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 I, 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 I want to tell you, if you do give up going to school, don't waste your time. Spend your time profitably if you give up school. Go to places where you'll get educated. And the most important thing to be educated is the religion. Now, I learned more about religion since I left school than I ever did in school because one of the places I went one day when I was off school, I went to the mat, down with, down, down with whom? I went to the mat, I did, and I learned an awful lot about religion there because there were one, there were one man and he had an old hocket in for sale and she wasn't looking too good. She was an old hocket and she wasn't too good. And the thing, the, the auctioneer said to El, he said, Sissy, what do we start with for this one? And some of the down the back said, we'll have a decade of the rosary, he said. <laughs> yeah. And then we never taught the rosary in school. Never taught the rosary in school. No, 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 no. Do you know another place I went? I went to the court in Macomb one day. <laughs> and I learned all about law, legal procedure. Legal procedure. A, a, a subject never, never tackled, tackled in, in, in either secondary or primary, primary school. But I learned an awful lot about it. For instance, the judge, a very good judge, you, you, I learned what a good judge is about, like, you know, because there was one man up there, you know, and he was shaking mad from drink he was, and the judge asked him, he said, sir, he said, do you drink much? <laughs> no, my lord, says he, I spill most of it. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another judge, the, the, the judge, another fellow came up, and he was up again for being drunk and disorderly, and the judge said to him, if you give me a good excuse, he said, I'll let you go. I will, my lord, he said, didn't I win a bottle of wits here, and didn't I get into bad company? Like, will you explain yourself, said the judge. I will, my lord, he said, the bad company? I met three pioneers, he said, I could drink it all myself. <laughs> and and, and I, I have learned a lot about aviation since I left school, yeah. Because another day, I got up to the airport, to Bunkark, I did, and I saw the planes coming in, and I saw the control tower, and I saw them going on. I was educated very much that day, and usually schools only take boys and girls to do a on a school tour or something. I was there all day, I was all day. But I tell you, I, I saw some very interesting things too. There was one man came in now, and he, he was looking all over the place, and this woman came up to him with a baby in her arms, and um, he, she was all about him, but he seemed not to know it all, and he said, eventually, she said, who are you? I'm your mother, she said, don't you recognize me? Oh, sorry, she said, I'll explain now, she said, you're wondering about the way, how young I look, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said. Well, the explanation like, is like this, he said. She said, there's a new pill around here called the rejuvenation pill, and it cuts your age in two in the grey, and <laughs> lovely. <laughs> And then he looked at the baby in her arms and by, <laughs> by the way, says, does that come with it too? Uh, no, 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 she <laughs> said, that's your father, didn't he take an overdose? <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> there was another fella come to the airport and he was up in an awful mess all together because his brother was coming home and he was away for 40 years. And he didn't know how he was going to recognize his brother. 
he didn't know how he was going to recognize his brother at all. And he said to one man, he said, how am I going to recognize my brother? Sure, he was away for 40 years. And the other man said to him, sure, your brother will have the same problems as he would you. He didn't see you for 40 years. He said, he had no problems. He said, I never left home, he said. <laughs> no? But then, when the brother did come then, he was, oh, he was one of these fellows that was out to learn all the big things over in America. You see, everything was big in America by the sound of it. And he come in, the brother, and he said, I say, he said, you told me I was going into Cork Airport. Now, and when I came into it, he said, it was a little bit of concrete laying in the ground, he said. I told him we'd go over it, he said. You call that an airport? And he said, this terminal, this little shack of a little bill, he said, you call that a terminal? And the brother, like, he had no answer at all for him, because he was a country boy like myself, like, you know, and he had to keep his mouth shut. He took him out and he put him into the cam, the cam a little fiesta. And, and that brother said, uh, you want me to get into that little bubble, he said. I must say, it. are you insured? Sorry, it's again from the brother, but they was going down and they turned out western one, they're passing the county hall, and, and, and the, the, the brother from America, he said, oh, gosh, he said. At last, he said, there's something worth looking at. Isn't that some little building, he said. I say, he said, could you tell me what building it is, he said. God no, I couldn't tell you all. I tell you one thing that he said to one dear child. This man may come in, he said. <laughs> yeah. No. Another place I go, <laughs> I went to maternity hospital one day. I did, I did. I was educated. I was. <laughs> a great place to go, let's see, you know, to go to the maternity hospital. I went into the end and I slipped into the waiting room. There was men, there was our men inside. There, there were kind of, it, there were a bit of tension and things like that. Like, but then the nurse come in and she called for Johnny and she said, Johnny, she said, who do you work for? Then my God knows, you see, what has that to do with it? But as a matter of fact, you see, I'm working for Patterson and Maguire. Won't that explain, you see, your wife have twins, she said. <laughs> Good, he was the lawyer with himself. And, and half an hour later, she come in and she asked for Tommy. And, and she said, Tommy, who do you work for? Johnson, Mooney and O'Brien, he said. Won't that explain, you see, your wife has triplets? We got Mick, got up and yeah, he will go on for the door and then I said to him, take it easy Mick, she said, your wife is nearly ready. She's like, hey, this is here walking for seven up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, a place I went to a few days, a few days, I went to a restaurant, I was hungry. I went to a restaurant a few days, I went out of school. I'm going to go in or when I just want to finish because that, that other gang that will be coming back and they only make a fool of me when they do come around. But I went to a restaurant, I did. And I was very polite. I said to the waitress, I said, um, what would you recommend? And she said, um, we have beautiful cow's tongue today, she said. I said, you don't expect me to eat something out of cow's mouth, do you? Oh, she said, we have duck eggs too. <laughs> yeah. And another day, another day, I went into a Chinese restaurant and I had no clue what the things was about, like, but I pointed to a number and to number 32, I think, and they brought out number 32 to me and you know something lovely, it's lovely, just beautiful, uh, but I wanted to know, uh, if I know exactly what, how, what it is, so I know what I want to ask for, you know, so I called over waitress and I said to her, what am I eating? And she was just arrived from China, she didn't know what I was talking about, so I had to start to give her a hint. I pointed at my plate and I said, Moo Moo. I said, Bear Bear. I said, Tick Tick Tick. Oh, she said, Oh, she said, Meow, she said. I had a double episode inside in the last restaurant, I mentioned. I went in ask for a fry, and the rasher was rotten, and I, I can be fooled in that again, but I said that day, I was going to stand up for myself. So I stuck the rasher in the fork, and the fork in the rasher, sorry, and I held it up high, and as loud as I could to attract the attention of everybody, and the restaurant was full, I called over the waitress, I said, waitress, I said, you got a pig? And she said out loud to him, to which end of the fork are you referring, sir? <laughs> yeah. uh, 
And the last one then, I changed from the fry to a boiled egg. And the boiled egg wasn't good either. So I called over another waitress and I said, Miss, I said, that egg didn't good? Don't blame me, she said, I only laid the table. <laughs> 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 I'll be back. You know, seriously though, when you think of it, that that guy celebrated the Eucharist this morning, it nearly make you give it up, would it? Oh, the Lord welcomes all comers, there's no doubt. Um, the next man is a man of great professionalism. A man who told me that he was in this parish 1943, you know, half of you weren't even born. I certainly wasn't. My sister was. You were. Uh, I was. Uh, <laughs> thanks, sis. Um, no, you weren't. Um, he's a man of many talents. We call him our parish priest because he really keeps us together and he advises us and he takes us aside. You know, he gave me a bit of a dressing down about the jumper, but I mean, you know, we're of a different age. But. Um, He's a great singer, a wonderful entertainer, and I know you're going to give him a great Dunamore welcome. Would you welcome on stage Father Canon Monsignor John Finn? <laughs> Isn't it terrible? Anyway, good night, everyone, and I'm, <coughs> I'm delighted to be here. Tonight, it's a far cry from the halls that I sang in uh, when I was a curate here in Dunamore. It was George Daly's Hall, and um, we had some wonderful nights there, in spite of the fact that it was very small, and there was a kind of a, right outside the backstage, there was a slurry pit. And when I brought a crowd from Castle Martin to act do Professor Tim, one of the fellows went out to try to get a, a pub near hand and didn't he fall into the slurry pit? Well, we're all running from him since <laughs> because he, he was a frightful, in terrible condition. The smell from him was frightful altogether. So that was my fond memory of Jardelli's Hall. But this is a tremendous, wonderful building. A bit cold tonight. You know, uh, that's what some of the artists were saying. It was a little bit cold, but it's a huge hall and it's very hard to heat it. So um, here I am, after so many years, coming along to sing for you. And I have a little tickling in my throat as well. Sure, I mean, the undertaker must even say something. So I must make some excuse for the fact that I'm <coughs> shoving on, moving on to 80. I will... The baby born yesterday's movie on <laughs> So I, 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 I'm without my partner, Father Jerry Reardon usually comes with me. And we sing harmony songs together pretty well. And uh, he's missing. I'm like a bird on one wing. <clears throat> so I'll try Love's Old Sweet Song for the old folk here, all the old people that were lively and hardy and young and good-looking, and they're still good-looking, I'm sure, in my time. But the years have crowded past us, and the fledgings all have gone older. So I hope you'll enjoy the Love's Old Sweet Song. <coughs> <coughs> Once in the dear dead days beyond recall When on the world a mist began to fall Out of the dreams that rose in a happy throng Lo, to our hearts 
sang love's old sweet song And in the dusk where fell the firelight gleam Softly it wove itself into a dream Just a song at twilight When the lights are low <clears throat> And the flickering shadows Softly come and go be weary, <clears throat> sad the day and the long, still to us at twilight comes love's old song, comes love's old sweet song. Even today we hear love's song of yore Deep in our hearts it dwells forevermore Footsteps may falter, weary grow the way Still we can hear it at the close of the day So till the end When life's dim shadows fall Love will be found The sweetest song of all <clears throat> Just a song at twilight when the lights are low And the flickering shadows Softly come and go Though the heart be weary <clears throat> Sad the day and the long Still to us at Comes love's old song Comes love's old sweet song Thank you very much <clears throat> and I couldn't go away without singing one more at least and uh, that song, you know what it is you all know it <laughs> it's the bridal hanging on the wall my goodness to the fright <laughs> <coughs> I said the last, in Connolly Hall I, the bishop was at it, Bishop uh, Klein and um, Bishop McGee and um, I mentioned that I sang it first in 1934 and when he came on stage, he mentioned that uh, he wasn't born in 1934. So I'm seeing it longer than the bishop was in this world, at least. And um, I sang it many times in um, Dunamore, Stoic. And I was here for nearly three years. And I must admit that the priesting was only secondary because I had a horse. And the local curate, uh, the next door neighbor curate, Father Moss Donovan, and myself used to hunt with a man by the name of Mick Shea. And as often as we could, we took the horses out and did a bit of hunting. I learned to ride here in this parish at Mick Buckley's. And I'll never forget the first day I tried to jump. <coughs> I landed in a, a forest break three times. The horse never even attempted to rise to the fence and in I went but 
I asked Father Marsh to show me how it was done. And uh, he was very determined. A great jock, wonderful horseman. And he gave the horse a scourge around the field and then faced for the fence. And the same thing happened. <coughs> he, would, he went into the forest as well. And he, he, the, the reply was that he, the old horse was no good. I suppose he was, he was right. So uh, from that on, I used to always sing the bridle hanging on the wall, and we'll sing it now. And there's a verse going with it, of course. Uh, the old verse, I always recite the verse. And don't she cap when I say the first line of it. And don't she jeer or say anything. The first line of the verse is, Oh, I know you folk think I'm crazy. And don't she laugh at that, no, because I'm not crazy, really. <coughs> I, I sang it one time for a number of nuns. And um, there were about 30 nuns in a semicircle. And a very old nun was alongside me. And when I came to the verse, she hadn't known about it. And I said, oh, I know you folk think I'm crazy. And she got up straight away and came over to me and she says, no, Father, we think you're great. <coughs> so now, here we are with the bridle and we'll swing it a little bit. <coughs> There's a bridle hanging on the wall And a saddle's in a lonely stall No more he'll answer to my call It's that bridle hanging on the wall there's a horseshoe nail above the door. It's a shoe that my old pony wore. There's a faded blanket in the hall. And a bridle hanging on the wall. With a pony for my guide, I used to ride on the trail, watching the moon swing low. But now my faithful pal is on the end of the trail. He's gone wherever the good, the good the ponies go. Yeah. crazy but I don't care what you'd say if you'd ever had a pal like him uh, you'd know why I'm grieving this way we rambled the prairies together for over 17 years a man never had a more faithful pal no I'm not ashamed of my tears a faithful pal say listen he woke me up one night when he heard a noise in the prairie he knew what it was all right a stampede Hayden right towards us, and he saw what he had to do, and he ran till he dropped. But he saved my life. I call that a friend, don't you? With a pony for my God, I used to ride on the trail, watching the moon swing low. But now my faithful It's 
What let's sing next is a sing way. He says it doesn't matter what you sing, sing way. <laughs> what let what let do? What do? There's a little nice little fishy song. This is a nice little thing. A mummy fish teaching her three little fishes how to swim in a pea in a pool. In a fishy pool. Well the language is a bit babyish. It was a itty pity poo is the little fishy pool. And three little fitted and a mummy fishy too. Twam three swim, said the mummy fishy twim if you can. And they twam and they twam all over the dam. And we'll sing it very slowly first because uh, they were very badly able to swim at the beginning. And then they sang their little verse in the Finnish language, the fishy language. You wouldn't know it because there's no Finn here except myself. <laughs> and I know the language very well. And uh, <coughs> so. A one, a two, a three. Down in the meadow in the itty bitty boot, the drum a tweet, the little fit, the dun, the mummy fit, the toot. Twim, dead, the mummy fit, the twim, if you can, and the twam and twam all over the dam. Down in the meadow in the itty bitty boot, the drum a tree, the little fit, the dun, the mummy fit, the toot, the twim. Twim, dead, the mummy fit, the twim, if you can, and the twam and twam all over the dam. Umpa dumpa dee dum got the modem. Umpa dee dum dee dee dum got the modem. Umpa dumpa dee dum got the modem. And the twam and twam all over the dam. And the mummy was teaching him how to swim very well. And they were swimming faster and faster and faster. And mummy was delighted. In fact, she brought daddy to see the three little fishes swimming at a great speed. A one, a two. A three down in the meadow in the itty bitty boot the drum a tree the little fit the dun the mummy fit the doot the twim twim the mummy fit the twim is a cat and the twam and twam all over the dam umpa dumpa dee dum god and wadum sh umpa dee dumpa dee dum god and wadum sh umpa dee dumpa dee dum god and wadum sh and the twam and twam all over the dam bum bum <laughs> there is something fishy about him, all right, I know. Uh, are you enjoying yourself? Really and truly. You know, that's not the aim of this at all. You're supposed to be doing your penance. You know, that's why we put on the show. Gay burden, you know that? <laughs> right, I think we're all set to go um, on the second half of the show. Now maybe they should bring in a break during the middle of mass the same way. <laughs> uh, in case you'd be wondering if, if there's any change between the first half and the second half, we could lose the show somewhere in the next half hour because um, the band went in for tea and they got hot punch instead. So um, I'm just warning you now. You know, if you see the lovely red cheeks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his mother doesn't know he drinks. <laughs> right, I tell you, okay, enough of the banter, back to the show, and good music, aha, that's what we were waiting for, you know, it brings out our best features. <laughs> I have a great, we're really going to get back, if you're kind of, after getting cold again, after the, we warming you up in the first half, well, this is really going to get you going, and with a clap in hands and everything, because we have a beautiful uh, uh, bit of music coming up, traditional Irish music, nothing like it, and played by a real expert in the field and I know you're going to enjoy it. He hails from the very heart of it, which is Kool-Aid. So, I want you to welcome Father Michal Olinchik. <laughs> 